Hey everybody. So it wasn't that long ago I uploaded a YouTube short showing a very disturbing thing that that's going on with computers now, at least with some computers. Apparently Windows Update will not only update Windows and update your system drivers, but it will apparently in some cases also update your BIOS without your permission. It just does it automatically. And not only would it sometimes update your system BIOS, but it may update firmwares on, let's say, your solid state drive. So I posted this short and I got some comments stating that apparently it's a thing with like Dell computers. And the computer in question was, in fact, a Dell system. It was a system I got in for service to get the thing out of the Windows. S mode bullcrap but while I had it here and once I had reinstalled Windows on the thing updated it to uh, Windows 11 22H2 the thing when it was installing updates one of those updates listed was system firmware I was like huh and the thing restarted and sure enough the um, UA5 firmware popped up and in initiated a system BIOS update and here's the thing, and what this is what I think about updating a BIOS, and I'm sure others in the tech enthusiast community would probably think of the same thing, is when you update your BIOS, you're always taking a risk. There's always the chance that something could hang up or you could have some sort of power failure. Now with laptops, it's not quite as much of an issue the least power failure because generally you have a redundant source of power I mean you have of course your you, if you're plugged in you have your of course um, AC adapter powering it but also you have an internal battery that's powering it too so if let's say uh, a tree blows into a power line and your recloser trips at the substation your power blinks out for a few seconds generally your computer's bias will not get ruined but I certainly hope that Dell is not doing this on their desktops. Because with desktop computers, of course, if your only source of power is interrupted, even for five seconds because of recloser trips, bam, your system BIOS may not have updated successfully and your motherboard could be bricked. Generally, the rule of thumb I've always had with BIOS updates is to only do it if you are trying to resolve an issue that is documented with the current system BIOS that's on that motherboard and that computer. Otherwise, generally leave the BIOS alone. Um, again, as mentioned, I would only suggest updating the BIOS if you're doing it to resolve a known issue listed in the BIOS update such as let's say CPU microcode let's say you're updating your CPU to a newer processor and your motherboard needs to have the BIOS flashed to recognize that new CPU sure go ahead update your BIOS just uh, keep your fingers crossed so you don't lose power during that BIOS update um, or does any kind of issue that is documented like an incompatibility, let's say, with Windows or whatever. There were a lot of BIOSes out there that were released simply for Windows 11, thanks to Microsoft Elite Class Business Requirements for Windows 11. Um, these Windows, these BIOS updates would um, automatically toggle the TPM on. And some of the tech enthusiast community even thought that these BIOS updates were totally unnecessary. They were only there to make those computers elite class certified as I call it um, since they would otherwise not meet the Microsoft elite class business requirements on Windows 11 because the TPM was turned off but the problem that I see with updating system firmwares is when you're when you have it done as an automated task in front of a general user who does not really know computers there's always the risk that, let's say, Grandma might freak out over her computer showing this weird message, and she might, oh, turn that off, turn it off. 
<laughs> and then she bricked the motherboard. That's why I think um, system firmware updates, UEFI updates, BIOS updates, they should not be automatically done. Windows updates should not be pushing them. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Because, I mean, yeah, I can understand in some cases if a UEFI firmware flash is pushed to fix some sort of major security flaw, but you have to you have to weigh the risk versus the benefits of that BIOS update. Is the BIOS update really fixing an issue? I mean, you have to consider a risk of the chance that the system's motherboard could get bricked. Let's say the computer's out of warranty and Windows Update automatically flashes the BIOS without the user's permission. And let's say something goes wrong and the system gets bricked. And it comes, it boils down to the matter of, okay, does this computer here, for example, we'll just use this little two-in-one here. Does this computer belong to its owner or is the owner Microsoft Corporation? I mean, Microsoft, they already seem to be really pushing the limit. They've been doing it for years, actually, when you consider the fact that Windows has so seriously tried to push forcing Microsoft accounts just to use the computer that you purchased with your own money. Now they're automatically flashing the BIOS of your motherboard without your permission and I imagine most people would not know what that means or how risky that is to do a BIOS update but it can be risky and things can go wrong and I'm sure if you're watching this video and you didn't know what that message was on your computer about your BIOS updating or your firmware updating chances are I mean you probably wouldn't much care for that being done without your permission considering the risk that it has so another thing now I mentioned not just the system bias but um, that computer that was in for service while it was here it not long after it installed a bias flash it later installed a firmware update for the solid state drive now updating a firmware on your storage Sometimes it's necessary. Um, matter of fact, I'll put a couple of cards up in this video of two cases of solid state drives actually needing a firmware flash to correct a major problem. But the thing is, in some cases, flashing the firmware on your SSD, you could run the risk of data loss. It could happen. For example, the, one of the cards I listed was for the uh, Intel, I forget what it was, it was an Intel SSD. And the issue was the original firmware on that SSD, it would go into this sort of um, semi sleep status and report to the computer that it's just an 8 megabyte device. And it would basically lock out access to that drive. And unfortunately, once it happens, it's a done deal. Your data, you can't access it unless you have some sort of recovery service try to handle it. And if you try to flash a firmware on the SSD, it would wipe the data. Another example would be um, a SanDisk SSD that I had got years ago. So a Dell laptop came for service. It was from an extended family member. Um, they had already bought an SSD for it because they, are, they were sort of tech savvy. Um, they just wanted me to go and put the SSD in for them because they were busy, I guess. But um, I swapped out the SSD and I kept the old SSD. Um, ended up wiping it because, well, to get their data off of it for one thing. But the issue it had was the file system would just get corrupted over time. And the SSD, it would just, it was weird. Um, you would see, you would see the issues reported in Event Viewer to where the drive was inaccessible. And because of that, it would cause the files to get corrupt. Well, a firmware flash fixed that issue. And an SSD um, got a second chance of life, and it's now installed in 
the Sleeper HP system that has the Core 2 Quad Q6600 and the GTS 450. I, I threw it in there. But um, otherwise, when it comes to your storage, I mean, I don't see it necessary to be flashing your firmware on your SSD unless there is a documented issue that is, I'd say, critical where the chances of data loss are heightened significantly. Otherwise, I don't see the need to be flashing your SSD's firmware, and I especially don't see the need for Windows Update to do it on your behalf without your permission. So again, um, this issue seems to be mainly with Dell computers, but feel free to leave a comment in the comment section if you've had this happen on a system that was not made by Dell. Again, when you buy that laptop or that desktop computer from Best Buy or wherever, or if you build the computer yourself, you effectively own that computer, not Microsoft Corporation. So, I think Windows Update needs to stop it with the automatic firmware flashes on, especially your BIOS or your storage. It's, it's ridiculous because those are, in fact, higher risk operations, especially if it's a desktop, because on a desktop you don't have redundant power sources because you don't have a backup battery in the thing. Now, maybe you do have a UPS connected to the uh, power source, which would be a good thing, but a lot of people don't. And the thing is, if, let's say, again, let's say something happens and the uh, your power trips out for a few seconds and your system was updating the BIOS. Not good, not good. I mean, fortunately here, our electric service is very reliable. I might have one or two blinks per year. But, anytime I flash a BIOS on a system, trust me, I get a little antsy when it's going, it's like, oh please don't let the power go out for even just a split second. Because, I mean, if it, if the power goes out during a BIOS flash, then chances are you could brick your motherboard. And pushing BIOS flashes to um, computers via Windows Update and having them run on the supposed behalf of the owner, when chances are the owner might freak out and shut their computer off when it's happening, or... Let's say someone's impatient. Let's say someone's impatient and they want to get back into Windows and they don't know what that message is on the screen. They turn the computer off. And they turn back on and it's bricked. It does nothing. Then what? So, yeah guys, I'm not a fan of what I'd seen recently when I had that Dell laptop in for service. I was, like I said, I, I was not really in favor of seeing it doing that with the automatic virus flash being handed down to Windows Update. So, yeah, I think Microsoft needs to remember that they don't own the computer. They just, I guess you can say they own the operating system that's installed on it. Because technically, um, when you run Windows on a computer and you buy it or it comes with your computer, you own a license to Windows, but it's like, you know, Microsoft technically still owns the software, but they don't own the PC that it's installed on. So, anyways, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends. And get the word out. Also, I have a second channel. That's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.